Hey guys, Sean here. Online there are now leaked images of DJI's 4-axis cinema camera and it might be called like the X7 ground kit or something like that. And yeah, it is a very interesting camera to look at because there were patents of it for a while ago. However, we can see there is quite a lot of change in the design. There's uh, things that they have left out and also some things that they have redesigned. We're going to look at the changes and also uh, we can also figure out what kind of ports we might expect on the camera and what uh, yeah, some of the buttons could do. So why is this called a 4-axis uh, gimbal camera? Because uh, of the arm design in front of it that can uh, move up and down. It kind of looks like a uh, jib design. However, this is mainly uh, have like a spring inside and is comparable to like your uh, Steadicam arm and those have like a spring inside that actually uh, prevents the up and down shakes when you're walking. Looking at the front of the camera, it is a much more nicer design compared to the original patent, especially having those two circles on the side. But also it looks like they have left out some of the side or bottom areas and uh, relocated some of the buttons, especially the on off switch and the record button and also you can notice that there was already a design for a 3D focus but being placed on one side. However, the final design has split the both sensors to either side or either corners of the camera. Looking at the sides of the camera, we can see like hot shoe mounts with uh, electrical connections. And these are actually for a side grip that we can see in the patent. And these side grips will have like different controls on each side. So one side will have a, a joystick that is mostly going through the menu and choosing what kind of uh, settings you need or for the exposure settings. While the other side we have like a more of a uh, joystick that we can see on a lot of the drone remotes and that would probably be the remote to control like the tilt or the pan of actually the uh, gimbal itself. Also noticeable on both of the grips there is like a uh, special dial on the back or on the side of it and those I believe would be for focusing however it's kind of odd that both of the grips have it uh, so it might have like a different control on each of them. And also on the front we have like dials for probably going through like exposure settings. On this side of the camera we can see three switches. Possibly these are actually for uh, setting the motors to either lock mode or follow mode. So you can actually set all to lock so it would lock uh, into the camera or the camera be locked. So if you move the camera it will still aim at the same spot. But can also set it to follow mode so it follows your movement so you can easily set them individually so they can actually like follow you in a certain way uh, most likely people would actually lock the rotational and uh, yeah set the it to follow the tilt and also uh, yeah the pan or just uh, lock it for just uh, following the pan movement so it doesn't tilt automatically up and down nor does a roll while you're walking around the big red button of course will be the record button and the small switch next to it would be the on and off switch of the camera. Now to the big door on this side and of course that would be for the memory and I believe it would be big memory slots for like CFAST cards or CFAST express and would have like a multiple of them so you have like uh, enabled to record to two medias or uh, have like a backup at the same time or have uh, it sequential to record one and if that is full it records to the other card. And the small rubber above it would probably be for the USB type C which we can also find on the patent. And this will be for uh, firmware upgrades, offloading footages and possibly uh, recording to an external SSD. However the other buttons I cannot really say what those could be. They could possibly for certain uh, settings like white balance shutter. However, I doubt there'd be like a button for ND because there isn't like a uh, yeah, X unit that they have like a built-in ND. So I doubt there would be a ND button. On the other side, we mainly have a lot of rubber doors. The top one would be for a full-size HDMI and the two under it would be for the SDI and the timecode. 
And then of course under it is a four pin limo to power it by an external source or being powered by DC source uh, with like 12 volts. On the rear of the camera there are two noticeable ports or slots that are recognizable if you like have a DJI uh, drone that those are like for recharging certain uh, drones however um, yeah on there I'm not quite sure if this uh, yeah camera would have like DJI's own proprietary battery that would directly stick onto that camera or if there is going to be a um, yeah accessory mount that you can uh, attach to the back and mount a V mount on it or other kinds of batteries. But if we refer to the patent, we can actually see that the patent is showing the camera being used in combination with a V mount. So there is a high chance there is a accessory that is mounted on the back so you can allow uh, using V mount batteries to power this camera. Looking at the top, we can see electrical connection points and also three uh, mounting points. And those are possibly for the uh, top grip that we can see inside of the patent. However, on the patent, it's actually screwed onto the camera with like uh, Allen key screws. However, there might be a total redesign with a different locking mechanism. So yeah, that is the top of it there's no screen on top of the camera so uh, yeah it is possibly that you really need to use an external monitor to really see any of the settings or possibly that you can use your phone to connect to a wireless app and uh, yeah actually see or change any of the settings of the camera wirelessly with your phone and looking at the bottom of the camera we have a lot of mounting points however oddly there seem to be two um, yeah, sensors or it could be microphones. I'm not quite sure if it's a microphone because it's a very odd placement to be under the camera. But also, uh, yeah, it being actual sensors like on a drone for if it's going too low for something, it's kind of odd that there be any sensors of that kind. So I'm not quite sure what those two things actually are. Looking at the overall design, it is designed for a handheld use. However, I do feel like it is lacking kind of a design for like a monitor. But yeah, the overall design is not finished yet. We don't see the actual final product because the top might still uh, have like something different added compared to what is shown in the patent and possibly have like a more proper mounting points for a monitor. But overall, what is the biggest issue of this camera for a lot of users is that if it's going to use the X7, you're quite limited to a set amount of lenses that can be used with this camera. So there's still quite a lot of users who rather use their own camera with a handheld gimbal. Another issue with this camera is the lack of audio inputs and also audio control. There is very noticeable no XLR mounts nor are there any like uh, 3.5 millimeter jacks for you to monitor the sound with or connect it with like simple microphones. So this is quite an issue for probably a lot of filmmakers who feel like that it should also record the proper audio so you don't need to have to sync your audio for certain shoots but also you to have like much better scratch sound than having some really bad onboard microphone. But overall, my opinion about this camera, it is not the final image or the final actual product yet. So there might be still quite a lot of things that could change. But I do feel like looking at it still, it is a very limited camera for a limited kind of use. And it is really for a certain set of people. And I doubt a lot of people would really buy into a DJI kind of camera like this instead of like buying like mirrorless or a small cinema cameras and um, yeah, just getting a proper gimbal for it. Because honestly, of people still rather have like working with a certain camera brand and have also the color and a lot of the things be still the same instead of having a wildly different range of cameras on set and having to match up the colors in post as close as possible. 
So that was mainly it. If you have any questions, please comment it in the comment section here below. While you're there, please hit the like and subscribe button. And uh, yeah, if you want to see more videos, there'll be videos popping up right now that you can click on. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.